okay so if you're dealing with a lot of stress this message will really help you if you're dealing with a lot of stress if you feel as if you're unfulfilled maybe you had your birthday recently and you look back and you just were a bit sad and i know what that feeling is this you're like this is not where i thought i would be right now I, I know what that feeling is and i understand that we're going to speak into that today so if you feel a bit unfulfilled you feel sad you you have a lot of stress going on in your life one of the major things you will notice is that when people have this people always think that maybe something is wrong sometimes it could be something wrong but stress is an emotional sign that you're out of balance it may just be the fact that you're devoting too much to one side third john verse 2 says beloved i wish above all things that you may prosper even as you're so prosper so what does the bible say the bible is emphasizing a lot of things the bible is emphasizing balanced growth god says that i don't want you to be i don't want you to be doing well and your marriage is in trouble god says i don't want you to be you know doing well and your health is in trouble what god wants for us is this that your health is doing fine your career is doing fine your relationship is doing fine god doesn't want us to have a butt in your life god wants it to be all around glory that's what god wants all around glory but most of the time balance is a problem for people so you see a lot of people that are very rich but their kids are not doing well you see a lot of people that are doing so well but they are yet to get married you see a lot of people that are married and are doing well but their marriage is in trouble and there's a lack of balance there so the question is that what is the cost of lack of balance the reason why there's lack of balance most of the time is because the same energy we give to growth in that area that is growing we do not give to growth in the area that is what not growing i'll give an example so you will notice someone that is doing well in his career he would begin i learned this from when i was young i mean i was a i was a young child i noticed i love to play with math because math was my best subject i love to play with math and guess what the more i did math the stronger i grew in mathematics but there were subjects i did not like i didn't like chemistry i hated biology you know chemistry i didn't like all those chemical words like you know all those chemical tables you had to cram it was just so difficult for me you know i know that for some of you here it's everything's always easy for you thank god for your life you know but i'm human i know that you are from an alien praise the lord you know it, we human beings go through normal struggles praise the lord so i just I, I just you know kind of struggle with that and you know back to back to what i was saying um balance was just key for me but i noticed that the areas i did so well was the areas i was investing a lot of energy so if you're not doing well in an area instead of you feeling frustrated angry you need to ask yourself that am i investing enough in this area like the areas i'm doing so well but god wants to do so well but now when god talks about balance balance is more than you having a healthy family you know so let me say this this let me say this quickly and i will i will just destroy the table you know when we have single seminar guess who does not come the singles that need it that's the truth the sick the real singles that need it don't come and you wonder why then the ones that are almost getting married that already really have no problem are the ones that show up the same thing the, the same thing when you have financial seminar guess who doesn't come the person that doesn't have money and they do not realize that the reason because the reason why things are getting worse watch this now the reason why things are getting worse is that they are not pushing enough energy and i understand sometimes it's because they've tried and tried and tried and tried and that's not worked now they've given up but the point is that you cannot give up until you die glory to god if you have an addiction seminar who does not attend everybody that has an addict the ones that don't have addicts attend hoping that they don't get there then the ones that have addictions never attend if you're going to see drastic results you must learn that anywhere you invest energy that's where you're going to have results life works on the principle of input and output so you know life works and that's why can, can i can we can we talk all of you that you know maybe you're young or maybe you're old whatever you are just remember that life works on input and output when young people abuse older people just remember one day you become old that's the truth you will become old you are not as young as you used to be 
because now you look fly everything looks okay you are so strong you have six you know biceps you have muscle you have all those things one day the muscles will go the pot belly will come out the breast will fall someone said jesus that's the truth at a stage when my mother was alive, she just even, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, when my mother was alive, she just say, I'm like, go, 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 my mom, go, 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 say, come in. I'm like, mommy, I'm not dressed. Said, you sit down, talk to me, what do you want? I'm like, oh, wow, that's like, oh my God. I'm like, mom, you know, but they're just old. Just old. And the reason I'm saying so that when you're young, just learn to really be polite to older people. Simple thing like, good afternoon, auntie. Good afternoon, uncle. Greets. You may have more energy, but they have more wisdom. Greets. I mean, I was somewhere and I saw an older lady coming in. I think maybe it was the transportation. And I said, can you get up and let me sit down? And she was like, wow. Where were you raised? I said, that's what should happen. We can't lose our manners because we are becoming contemporary. Even in church, you just see, you just see, some of them just walk past an older man. Great. Then the next thing I will say is that learn to build relationship for the future. All these TikTok, Instagram followers, they are not following you anywhere. Learn to build relationship for the future. Carry your things. Go and greet your uncles. Go and greet your aunties. Sit down and have conversation. You know the problem with young people? I people say, nobody wants to help us. The reason why they never want to help you is this. Because when it was time for you to sow the seed of just building the relationship, you didn't. Now you are in need. You want to pluck from it. You now begin to say, after all, my parents helped you. They helped your parents back. But that's not your own seed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. So back to the life of balance. So how does God view balance? So as we are talking about balance family, balance this, balance that, God views balance in a different way. God looks at balance from a spiritual perspective. What's a spiritual perspective? God goes, all your own hurt is wonderful. But what about eternity? How are you living for this life? And the reason I'm saying so is that a lot of people live... And they are thinking about just now. So you hear them say, I'm the MD of this, I'm the this of that, I'm the this of this, I'm the this of that. That's really wonderful. But the question I want to ask you is, is when you get to heaven, will all those things matter? Those things will not matter. Because what happened in balances is, you've done so much for yourself in your physical life, but in the things that have heavenly reward, You've not done for yourself. And that's why, as a pastor, it is my job, either you like or you do not like, to be able to remind you that this world doesn't end here. So that you don't consume all your resources on things that will perish. The reason why is that a day is going to come, you're going to close your eyes. And open it on the other side of eternity. And you will stand before God. And when you stand before God, the question is this, what did you do for me? Not what you did for your career, not for your business, but for your marriage. What did you do for me? And the reason why I'm saying so is that, for Revelation chapter 2 verse 9. Let, let, let's look at Jesus Christ. <laughs> Revelation chapter 2 verse 9. This is amazing. Revelation chapter 2 verse 9. See what Jesus Christ said here. His words. I know your works and tribulations and poverty. Now that confused me. He says your poverty and he says you are rich. Oh wow. You are rich, but he says you're poor. You know why he said so? Because materially, they were poor. This church, this church folks, they didn't have the cars, they didn't have the SUVs, they couldn't, they couldn't travel to Paris at the instance, they couldn't go on vacation, they were poor. But the Bible says you are rich. How can you be rich and you be poor? The reason why he said so, he says, in the things that is physical, you're poor. But in the things of the spirit, another thing we measure, you're rich. Wow. That's why it's possible to be rich online and poor physically. Same way it's possible to be rich physically and poor spiritually. Remember the story of Lazarus and the rich man? When the rich man was here, the rich man was to be large. He was rich. But he was poor spiritually. As soon as he crossed to eternity, his poverty began to stain in the face. The balance is that 
be rich physically and be rich spiritually. Oh, wow. What about Lazarus? Lazarus also was not balanced. You know why? Lazarus was rich spiritually but was poor physically. The balance is this. Be rich physically and be rich what? Spiritually. But guess what? Lazarus, his wealth in the realm of the spirit paid off when it goes to the other side. Then when it goes to the other side, all of a sudden, the rich man became poor and the poor man became rich. It says, I know your works and tribulation and poverty. He said, though from a perspective, you are rich. Question, ever look at me? Just look at me one minute. If God looks at you, are you rich or wretched? You know, if I look at you, I look at, I look at your treasure, you'll be like hounds. I look at the forex you have. I look at how people look to money. I'm like, oh my God. Oh, you are sophisticated. But when God, you know, because I see you as human to human. I look at you, I look at, oh my God, look at that girl. Two million followers on social media. But when God looks at you, does he think you're rich? Or he thinks you are not just poor, wretched. And, and the reason I'm saying so to you is that if it crosses your mind that from God's perspective, I'm wretched, you have the opportunity to begin to build spiritual worlds today. And unfortunately, a lot of people are wretched in the spirit. Let me show you in the Bible. Revelations chapter 3. Guess the people that, 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 that are so proud. The people that are spiritually wretched. Revelations chapter 3 verse 16. People that are wretched spiritually. They are so proud. You, you, you're quick to say, do you know how many followers I have? Do you know why I stay? Oh, you know, I tra I've, traveled, I've traveled to 24 countries. And you boast in your wretchedness. See what the Bible says in Revelation chapter 3 verse 16. It says, So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold on earth, it says, I was free out of my mouth. Verse 17. He says, Because you say, what do you say? Say it out loud with me. What's the next word? He says, I'm rich, and increase with goods, and have need of nothing. And God says, And you do not know that you are wretched, you are miserable, you are poor, and you are blind. The question is that whose perspective do you want to manage? Your friends or God? Because many of you, the, the way you carry this Louis Vuitton bag, eh? Like, you know, you now wear LV shoes and the product glasses. See, I'm not saying that's wrong, but if all that, if that is all the investment you have, you have you, uh, yeah, your account is not balanced. What is in your spiritual account? What is in your spiritual account? You can't be driving a Range Rover, driving a G-Wagon, and your spiritual account is empty. The same way, physically, your account is heavy here. Let your account be heavy in heaven. Look at him and say, let your account be heavy in heaven. <laughs> have, you had, have you had, this is wrong though, have you had a, cost, a, a friend that works in the bank, and you guys have a mutual friend, or someone was toasting you, and you were struggling, you can say, hey, that guy is loaded though. His account, eh? E. His account, eh? E. What was it? His account is. His account is a moving. E. E. His account is. His account breathes. His account breathes like he's a living soul. I'm saying, when will angels start talking about you? That angel, Michael would tell him and say, hey. Blessing, e -e 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 -e. the spiritual account. E -e 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 -e. Ha, even my kid is jealous of you. Don't just make men jealous of you, make angels jealous of you. Yeah. Glory to God. So the question now is that okay, okay, Pastor, I know <laughs> some people their account is that they're handsome. That that's even the one I don't understand. They're like are they a fine boy, no pimples, like all dimples, hell shining. Really? Really? At 45? You're boasting that, you know, you're boasting about how you look. My boast is in the cross. My boast is in the cross. In the finished work of Christ and Christ alone. Because sometimes you, you become, you'll be like, uh, uh, 
that is the first king girl slim body booty on the side you know and when you see all those things you know i'm like the one that gave you the body what have you done with it when he gave you the body you think it was for tiktok he had a bigger purpose Someone say thank you, Jesus. He says, You're rich. He said, You say you are rich. You say you are beautiful. He said, You are ugly. You are naked. You are naked. God says, and if God says you are naked, you are naked. It doesn't matter what you wear. You are naked. Naked. Strip naked. So, how do I begin to build for eternity? That's the question. Let's go ahead. It's Prophet chapter 11, verse 30. The way you begin to build for eternity is that the same way you pay attention and you shop right and you design right and you do this right and you work well on your business and you work well on your marriage and your family. Can you begin to work on the things of God that way? Prophet chapter 11, verse 30. See what the Bible says. It said, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. But guess what? Now, next line, next you want to go. And he that what? Winning soul is wise. Say, it says all the time you're winning souls, inviting someone to church. To people outside, why are you stressing? Like, it's bad enough you go to church. Because, you know, why are you stressing? Because we understand, listen to me, we understand that the way we make spiritual investment is by soul winning. So he says, we may look foolish to you. We don't blame you because you think we, we don't understand. That's fine. But I say, he that winning soul is wise. Why? Every time we're winning soul, we're planning for our eternal future. Because when you get to heaven, Jesus will not say, what clothes did you have? How many came to your wedding? He will say, how many souls did you win for me? So the question is that someone says, Pastor, I really want to win souls, but I'm not passionate about it. How do I, how do I become passionate about this? I'm, I'm going to, something, I, I saw something yesterday that destroyed everything for me. And it's this picture of this ch lady from Chibok. This Chibok picture, it, it really it ruined everything for me. Can you put on the picture one minute? And I saw this picture and said, Chibok girl wears Kiboko Haram gets engaged in the US. And, and when I saw it initially, I was like, oh, good for her. And the Holy Spirit began to draw me. I said, well, Lord, Lord oh, right, she got engaged. What's my business with that? You know. Okay, maybe it's an NLP testimony. Let's look at it. Maybe she was praying in NLP. Then, then it occurred to me what God was saying. Let me tell you something. The only reason why this does not mean anything to you is because you still do not realize that there are over 100 girls still held in Chibok captivity till now. Show, show them. Show, show the next picture. There are over 100 girls still held. They are still missing. And you know what? As soon as that girl's picture came out that she got engaged, if you are connected to them, either you are their father you are their mother, you are their brother, you are their sister, you will go into an emotional roller coaster because you are asking yourself that a dead child is better than a missing child. And the reason why that picture didn't mean anything was because I was not that connected. The reason why you people's winning souls don't mean nothing to you is because you are not connected to know that God is saying that my souls are missing. My sons are missing. My sons are missing. I didn't create them to follow darkness. My sons are missing. How many mothers do I have in the house today? Mothers, fathers. If you have a child, raise up your hands. If you have a child, raise up your hand. Just raise up your hands. I want you. Yeah, give, 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 give her the microphone. Just, you can have your seat. T tell me the first two, their names. You, you need to help with the microphone, yeah. David and Darissa. If something happened that Darissa's go missing, what, what will happen to you? I'll be an emotional wreck. Ha, I'll start shouting. <laughs> what? I'll start shouting, start looking for her, you know. Is that how you be looking for what will happen? Hey, <laughs> I want to ask you when they say you have contract, will you what will you say? Ah, my child is missing. Oh, help me. Oh, at that moment, contract does not matter. Yes. If, if your husband says, Let's have sex, eh? <laughs> <laughs> nothing else matters because the child is missing. The reason why 
She feels that way because it's a child. No wonder God feels so much about souls that are lost. No wonder God is concerned about people that don't come to church. Because he says, I made them not to go to hell. I was trying to be the family. Don't let Satan take them. Let me get, is, can I get another mother that, that's going to tell me what, what another mother or father? Any other father here that will take you cool and calm? You know, your child just got me. It's okay. It's the will of God. Let's go. You know. If your child, what's, what's your child's name? Praise the Lord. His name is David. His name is David. Yes. How old is he? He's going to be a year on Friday. He's going to be a year on Friday. Just imagine. God forbid, this will never happen in Jesus' name. On Monday, you get home from work and they say, David is missing. What will happen to you? It's like the world has come to an end. The world? My world has come to an end. They say, my world has come to an end. It's not, not how God feels when he sees people that are far from him and God is saying, what can I do to reach these people? The reason, let me tell you, the reason we don't feel about the soul, because, because it seems like other people's children. But one of the prayers you have to pray for yourself is that God will break your heart with what breaks his own heart. It's a divine experience. When, when your heart is meshed with God's heart, and as God's heart is broken, your heart is broken. When, when I saw that picture of the cheap girls, I said, oh my God! Initially, I, I couldn't feel it. But as soon as that information came out, news and tears will have broken out in several areas of the Chibok community. Mothers will have thrown themselves in the air, broken their legs as they landed on the floor. Fathers will have gone into BP shock as their blood pressure rose. And the reason why is that they, they are saying that my child is missing. And God is saying that my people are lost. My people are lost. Not because they want to, but they are lost. And some people think that, you know, you know, don't we, are we not pushing it too much? How can we push it too much when souls are perishing? We're not pushing it too much. And I know that some of you are like, you know, I think I'm going to talk to you about this kind of thing. I want God to bless me. That's the problem with this kind of new generation of Christianity. When you want to use God to get married, you want to use God to make money, you want to use God to blow. And that's why eventually when you blow, married and everything, you forget God. Because you never loved him. You only used him. But God says, seek me. He says, seek first the kingdom. I am the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom. And it's righteousness. And some of you, can I be honest with you? The reason why your miracle is today is that God is waiting for you to grow up. So that you will begin to appreciate the giver, not the gifts. And you begin to prioritize the giver, not the gifts. And God says, you want your husband, get me first. God says, you want your husband, marry me first. God says, you want a wife? Marry me first. God says, you want a job? Drop me first. He says, sign up with my company first. God says, you want a business? I'm your business first. Oh my God. People that are extravagant in worship. And, that, and that's why it's painful today. You know why it's painful? Because a lot of people, oh wow, just really think that I'm here to get something. Listen to me. I'm not here to get something. I'm not even here for convenient Christianity. He's paid the biggest sacrifice. He died for me. There's nothing I can do that can pay that back. Don't you understand? The life I live is not mine. It's mortgaged. When he died, he took my place. The life I live is his own life. I don't live unto myself. I live unto him. So, my future, my goal, and my ambition cannot just be about a hundred million. Cannot just be about a car and about family. Hey, my vision and future must be about what he wants. Why? He must increase and I must decrease. And the balance is this. This is the balance I'm talking about. To do well on earth and be rich on earth. But can you be rich in eternal things? <laughs> he said, someone say, I have 50,000 followers on social media. How many are following to heaven? <laughs> Why are they following to? No way. No way. If they're your followers, why are they not going to heaven with you? 
I'm not, I'm not going to be concerned with all the people are doing. I'm going to be concerned with what Christ has asked me to do. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. I made the decision many years ago. I am a follower of Jesus Christ in rain, in storm, in tough times. I will follow true and true and true. And I will take as many people as possible on this journey of following Christ. It will be difficult. It will not be all the people want. People will misunderstand me. Church will misunderstand me. But I've made up my mind. I am a follower of Christ. I'm a follower of Christ. I'm not in this for money. I'm not in this for a job. I'm not, listen to me, someone says, but you did that. I'm, I'm not perfect. Sometimes I make the biggest mistake and I apologize about that. But the thing is that if you see my heart, you see the heart of someone that wants to follow Christ. My heart is after him and that's all that matters. Even though he slays me, yet will I praise him. As the dear parent for the ones who look show my show, long after the Lord. The best part of my life is not the pulpit. The best part of my life is when I'm in my secret place with my lover. Where I'm with my Lord and I can go before him and die before him and say, Here am I and you are fair. I love you, Jesus. I honor you. You are my all in all. There is no one like you. You are everything that matters. That everything will fade, but you will stay. And people may not understand me, but I really do not care. I'm not trying to be politically correct. I'm trying to be heavily correct. And sometimes we have to remind ourselves that this world is not our home. We are just passing through. You are building too much for fire to consume in the future. Because the Bible says everything on earth will be consumed by fervent heat. Build for eternity. As I close, someone says, Okay, pastor, I want to build for eternity since by winning souls. But the king is in, I don't even know what to do. I don't even know what to say. There are just four things you need to do to know about winning souls. Can I have my flower pot? Just four things you need to know about winning souls. Just four things you need to know. In John chapter 4, Jesus gave a very powerful example. And this is what he said. Jesus gave us a style of, you know, of what it means to win So Let me just show you John chapter 4. Let me show you quickly. And you must be concerned. So from this message, you must begin to have a list in your mind. Phenom, you must begin to have a list in your mind. You must begin to have a list in your mind and say, Satan, use me. You, you told me yourself. All the girls, whew. Now that you're in Christ, let God use you. Some of you, you used to organize some party. You, you organized party. You were the one that used to put weed in the brownie. You used to put the weed in the punch. You are the one that used to distribute the corruption money in the whole office. You are the one that used to organize the OG, the, the, the threesome, the foursome. Or you are the one that used to record the video. Now you are born again. You can't record in church. Your video can only record sin. Let your video record righteousness. Let your video record what? Righteousness. Post righteousness. When they needed a girl, hello, Suko, you there? Alpha, and now check in. How many? Two. Spec, uh, slim. Slim and pointed. What are you doing for God now? What are you doing for God now? John chapter 4. Someone say, Lord, use me. Someone say, Lord, use me. I'm really hoping that you will become balanced. That it will not just be about wearing all this, you know, native clothes that makes you know that we're a very rich man. That heaven will know you will be rich in heaven. It's not about having physical children. You will have spiritual children. Spiritual children that God will take, name them after you. John chapter 4. The Bible says in verse 4, and Jesus said say this, he must need go to Samaria. Why must he go to Samaria? Why must he go to Samaria? Read the rest of the story. The reason why was that he was going to be at a well where he was going to meet a woman that was a prostitute, like sleeping around. 
and they said whatever it takes i must need go to church maria four steps towards winning souls the first one so winning is like planting a seed like planting a seed so when you want to plant a seed look at this this is a fully grown flower right now we want to plant a seed you know the first thing we do we begin to walk on the soil we begin to walk on the soil the first thing if you want to win someone to christ is this you need to walk on the soil don't preach yet what is walking on the soil praying for them being sensitive to the holy spirit is three things walking the soil the first thing is praying for them the second thing is being sent to the holy spirit and the third thing is building an engaging relationship with them what does that mean don't just come and say the bible says make them your friends build a relationship if they like to talk about asna talk about asna if they like to talk about finance talk about finance because you are building a relationship listen to me it's difficult for people to listen to you if they don't know and trust you true or false true so jesus christ went to samaria so you know what he did he went to the well and let me say something to you a lot of you need to find a way to keep in touch with that not born again because the more born again you are the more you lose your born again friends you need to find a way to keep in touch with them. So, Jesus Christ went, you know, Jesus Christ went to the well. You know why he went to the well? He knew the man was coming there. He knew where the people gather, the people that are not followers of Christ. He was there. And when he was there, the man came. Jesus Christ did not say, I want to preach to you. No, he didn't say so. He told the woman. The woman came and says, hey, um, will you give me water to drink? Why did he say water? Because what they had in common was that the woman came to fetch water. He says, give me water to drink question what do you have in common with people that are far from christ football money crypto community building real estate fashion whatever it is start the conversation from there start the conversation from there and say give me water to drink and what is giving me water to drink the, the girl you know the woman really was she's i mean the woman is intelligent she was like <laughs> it says first of all the jews don't talk to the gentiles they were like two races i don't talk so like how can you be a jew ask me a gentile for water if you want another kind of water tell me the water you want tell me the water you want you know <laughs> and jesus christ said uh, well i appreciate but you know give me water and she said, okay, okay, okay. And he said, and he, and he said um, if you know what's talking to you, you'll have asked him to give you the well of water. Uh -uh. The lady said, uh -uh, sea lines. Sea lines. She was, she was chopping it. And I said, ah, if you are that powerful, Lord, the man that has no bucket, please give me this living water so I will not come and fetch water again. And then Jesus Christ, it was just because just Christ was first tilling the ground. He was bonding. Bondage. They just guys left water and just say, okay, why not go and call your husband? And she was like, uh, well, <laughs> don't bomb the cable now. Just ask me direct, are you dating or not? So the woman answered like every all of us will answer. Go and call your husband. She said, mm, it's complicated, but I'm a single. That's all she said. She said, it's complicated because she said that um, I'm with nobody. And Jesus Christ looked at her. And then instantly the prophetic kicked in. Jesus Christ said, mm, you're right because you've had five husbands and the guy you are shagging right now you're not married to him and the man go and then, then i head open he said oh wow i perceive you're a prophet and that's how you win people to christ how do you win people to Christ? you start from a natural conversation and move it to what a spiritual conversation we, we start by talking about Churrasco, all the nice restaurants. That's a, is that what they do on Instagram? What do they do on Instagram? On Instagram, you know what they do? When they want to like you, they start liking your pictures. Liking it, liking it, liking it. Then what happens next? They start commenting, commenting, commenting. Then once you start liking their comments, they slide into... Give, give her the microphone, she knows the process. <laughs> give her the microphone, she knows the process. Yeah, give, yeah, yeah. yeah. She knows the process. Yeah. T tell me. T tell me what they do. It's on. Just speak. Just speak. They slide into your DM. What, what do they start with? Hi, pretty. No, no, no. Before, before hi, they like your pictures, right? They first, like your pictures. First one is like your pictures. Yes. First two, they start commenting. commenting. First three, what? They slide into your DM. And, and when it's like you start chatting on the DM, yes, then what? Sir. First four is what? If you 
you give like me them back, you yeah. reply, but if you don't like you, if you like them back, then give me your what? <laughs> give me what? Your, your WhatsApp number. Yes, then after WhatsApp number, what did they ask for again? Copy. Look at the evangelism process. <laughs> That's a total evangelism. So, so the first thing is that they, they begin to like and like and like and like. And when they start liking and commenting, you two go and check their profile. Because all of you are busy tilling each other's soil. You are busy tilling the soil. So the first step is that you till the soil. The second step is that you now plant. Plant is when you share a story like, oh my God. Like, give you on the, give, give you on the microphone. You know, you share the story that, you know, there was a year in your life, almost 100 girls went through your hands and, and you were very wild with ladies at that time. You Hold the microphone close to your mouth, yeah? Yeah. To the glory of God, there's nothing to be ashamed about. That was the old you. This is the new you right now. One? Yes, sir. So you were very wild with the ladies. You told me one time that this way, I mean, because phenomenal, I mean, close to me, you told me one time that he went to the club and he made this girl at the club. That's after he made the girl at the club. And when he made this girl at the club, he was like, hey, come to my place. And he was trying to rap her. He said, can't you remember me? You've slept with me before now. Yeah. He said, no. He said, no. He said, I said, no. This is your house. And describe the whole house to her. And he said, and like, really? But that's because that year, almost 150 girls went through his, his corridor. But see what the Lord has done with this guy right now. So, so, who else can share that beautiful salvation? So, you'll be like, you'll be like, ah, phenom, like, 150 girls went, <laughs> how much weed were you doing in the day? Just hold the mic, yeah? Seven sticks. Seven sticks, full sticks, right? In one sitting. Yeah. One? In one sitting. Seven sticks in one sitting. Because some of you think you can do weed. <laughs> and how many sitting in a day? About 10 sometimes. I couldn't count. What? I just kept on going. You just keep going. Yeah. And the reason why is that, you know, there's a way people that are, that are far from Christ always feel that see, my sins are too much. You will use this as one to brag. I said, what is your sin is too much? What can the blood wash away? What are you doing? You're planting. You send them an NLP video of a testimony. See what the Lord has done. You're planting. So the first thing is that you're tilling the ground. Second thing is you're planting. The third one is the nurturing. It's the watering and nurturing. What's watching and nurturing? You keep building up, building up, building up. And the last, when you keep building up, is at that stage you begin to answer their questions. Because some of them is like, ah, no, 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 no. Hey, how can God forgive me? Do you know that I've, had, I've done abortion seven times? It's a small deal for God. Don't say when I say, I've done abortion, they say, hey, you, hey, my God. <laughs> Even God will struggle to forgive you. One time I was trying to preach to a girl and say, God cannot forgive me. I said, why? He said, I killed the baby. And I pretended I didn't kill the baby. And I looked at her in the eye. And I said, there's nothing that the blood of Jesus Christ cannot wash away. And that's the power of God's love. That's the power of God's grace. I mean, when I look at people like Phenom, I see God's grace amazing grace like reckless grace like reckless some of you your story is worse i just know him i know you've done more but that's good grace so the first thing you, you water how do you water by building on what you've done and by answering that question begin say um so you know but there's a guy in my office he speaks in tongues, speaks 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 but he sleeps with all the girls in our office how can i be born again because they cannot understand how you are speaking in tongues and you're doing that you're not beginning to explain because they have all these questions. You'll be like, how can a loving God send people to hell? You begin to explain because they have all these questions. They say, but I don't like church. You say, that's okay. Because at, at the question stage, you're not really about arguing with them. You're just about creating the pathway for them to make a decision. The woman at the world told Jesus Christ, okay, the Jews said he must worship in the temple. We said in the mountain, Jesus Christ said, leave that one. Don't worry about mountain and temple. Receive the one that is here. And the last phase is this. So there's the tilling the, tilling the ground planting what's the third phase watching and nurturing and the fourth phase is what the harvest the harvest is when you call them to a decision and say okay come to church on sunday with me 
The problem with evangelism is, is and I want to what the problem is. Most of you think this form must happen at the same time. Most of the time, it's not so. What Phenom has a microphone, does it say have it? How did they give your life to Christ, Phenom? You don't have the microphone. Did the four happen at the same time? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was my girlfriend at the time that took me to church. Yeah. Yeah, but it was uh, my mom used to mention church. Did you see all the planting? Mm. His girlfriend his mom was the first planter planted. Then your girlfriend also planted. Yeah, my brother. But you were sleeping with the girlfriend that planted, right? That time. Yeah, 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 that's fine. You know, I'm just telling you how God can even use imperfect people to plant. Because you're the one that thinks you must be a saint. God can use you anyhow. Continue. Yeah, my brother as well. Then my girl. Your, bro your brother planted. Yeah, they were always telling me to go to church. And stuff. Yeah. Then when did you eventually go to church? Um, one day. What happened that day? The message was. It was like the pastor was talking to me. Wow. Yeah. Was that the day he gave you a letter to Christ? So you went back and thought about it? I think that was, that was the day I gave my letter. That's, That's the idea. Yeah. So you see, there's been a lot of telling the hearts, planting, watering, went to church, and that was it. You know, I had, you know, I had a friend. I had a friend. Ooh, his name is Kule. I was trying to get him born again. In fact, this morning, there's a guy I'm trying to get born again. I've been speaking to him for six months, six months since last year, September. I don't know, it's more than six months now. It's more than six months. So 4 a.m. this morning, I had to call him to see if he's going to church or not. And he said, no, no, no. He said that, well, I've been to church once now, and that's fine. I've, I did, once in a year is okay. You know, I've done enough. And I don't feel bad. It's just where he is. Let me tell you what, it, what the biscuit I don't want to make. Oh, uh, wow. If this hole is what God gave you the opportunity to share the gospel with, the problem with born again is that walk with the hole you have. Born again is not here. They want to force it. And when you force it, you break the relationship. But if you keep the hole and you keep walking with that hole, walking, that hole is having what? Larger, larger, larger. So how do you, in a practical way, how, do how does this work? At work, hey, hi, tell me your name again. Yeah, hi. You, in the morning, you just say, hey, how are you? Good morning. And you just walk past. Good morning, Osi. Walk past. One day, you say, Osi, I didn't even know your son's name. And you say, oh, my name is Osi Jonathan. Oh, wow. What do you like to do? Well, I love to watch movies. Oh, wow. But I've been greeting us for the past two weeks. I've been toiling the ground. Now, I've built a conversation. So, after, you know, so I say, hey, Osi Jonathan. So, we're like, you know, one day, we're like, ah, I bought you lunch. You bought a lunch. Well, you're so nice. Then one day, after buying lunch and all of those kind of things, she thinks I want to toast her because that's the way some people are wired. So she'll like, every time you say, oh, hi. You're like, oh. But the thing is that, just make up your mind. I don't marry my, my evangelistic <laughs> prospects. Because some of you get confused with that. Especially the young ones, the single ones. So eventually, you're like, um, oh, see, you send out a next level prayer, flyer, a testimony. She's like, oh, wow. So you do church. You say, well, you can say it that way, but I have a good relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm a Jesus follower. I say, oh, wow, I respect that. And she goes, ah, so you don't... You're like, it's not about the do's or don'ts. It's about following Jesus. Because she wants to bring in a negative thing like that. You're like, and maybe one day you can even come into church when you're ready. And you're like, mm, I might not go to church. I have my own church. You say, that's okay. That's not the point. And just move on. My friend, I was doing that for one year. Then one day, when we're closed, I will... Two times in a, in a week, I will go and eat together. And he told me, I say, hope you're not taking me to church to come and, hope you're not buying me food to come and get me born again. No, because me, I'm not, I don't want to be born again at all. I said, I'm just buying you lunch. Enjoy it. Then after about some months, he said, you're even a wicked person. Hey, they call you pastor, pastor. You have never invited me to church before. The reason why is that it was at that point, the heart opened. And I said, come to church. I, he came. I said, wow, it was really nice. It was really nice, really nice. Then, then he didn't come again. Then he, after the said, you didn't even invite me back. I said, was you be invited back? They invited back. Long and short, he got born again and he became a pastor under one and a half years. Just planting, toiling the soil, planting, watering, and harvest. Let's pray. Stand on your feet.